Hello friends, it's Lisa and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books and also the movies and shows that I watched in the month of April. So I believe I read I think eight books this month and watched a couple different shows so I'm just gonna get right into it. Grab a drink of your choice. Let's just get cozy and chat about these books. So the first book that I read this month was Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker and Wendy Zhu and I gave this a four and a half stars. So I read this for the Buzzwordathon, which is hosted by Kayla from Books and Lala. I read this for the April pick, which the buzzword for April was like galaxy terms. So moon cakes, you know, it works. <laughs> so this graphic novel is super cute. We're following this young witch who kind of helps their friend who is a werewolf who is trying to defeat this creature and they don't really know how to go about it so they enlist the help of their friend who is a witch and as well as like her grandmas who are also witches and they kind of try to brainstorm and get together to defeat this monster and you also see kind of the relationship between the young witch and the werewolf bloom and it's just so cute and so precious i love the relationship between these two main characters so i actually don't remember any of the characters names but the two main characters, the young witch and the little werewolf, their relationship was just so cute and so precious. Also, I'm going to apologize now. There is construction happening and it's going to probably be happening this whole video, so hopefully you can't hear it. <laughs> but this was just such a cute and cozy read. I loved the relationship between the two main characters. I thought they had such a good bond and a good way of like communicating and helping one another and just being there for each other and it was just so precious and this is definitely like the perfect thing to read in the fall. I read it in April because I wanted to read it for the Buzzwordathon, but I would love to reread this in like October when it's you know cozy time, fall time. I think it's just the perfect book to read around that time of year so would definitely recommend checking it out this fall. I mean if you want to read it now and want to get the fall vibes I don't you know not recommend that. I had a great time. <laughs> but yeah overall just very cute very cute art style as well. The colors really added to the cozy atmosphere and it was just really great. So I would definitely recommend checking it out. So the next few books that I have to talk about are books that I read during a 24 hour readathon that I did with Darian and Casey. They both vlogged it. So I'll have their vlogs linked below. I did not vlog. I didn't feel like it, but I did like document it on my Instagram stories, which was really fun. So I would love to do that more, but Anyway, back to the books. <laughs> so some of the books that I read for the 24 hour readathon, I'm just going to group together because they're both part of the same series. So I read Paper Girls Volume 5 and Volume 6 by Brian K. Vaughn. So I finally finished that series, which is very exciting. And I gave Volume 5 a four star and Volume 6 a four and a half star. So this series is very, very strange. So I'm going to do my best to explain kind of what it's about. But we're following these four girls who all have a paper route. They are paper girls. And in the first volume, I don't think that they really know each other that well. I think one of them is new to doing a paper route, so they don't know who she is. But the other girls kind of know each other, but I don't know if they're necessarily like that close. But the morning we're seeing them do their first paper route is actually the morning after the night of Halloween. So some teens, some hooligans are out and about and causing trouble. So they decide to kind of stick together so they can avoid being like bullied or anything from these older kids. And so the four of them end up coming across this like abandoned place, I think, and they end up going into the basement and finding this time machine. So kind of throughout the whole series, we're seeing them travel back in time, but also forward in time and meeting different versions of themselves. And it's just so strange and so weird that I can barely explain like anything else that happens beyond that. But it's one that was really enjoyable to read while I was reading it. So in volume five, they traveled even farther into the future. There's also a lot of people kind of involved in this who are the ones who like created the time machines and are kind of doing things in different timelines. So in volume five, we're seeing a lot more of that. We've traveled into the future and we're seeing more of the people who have kind of had an influence on these time machines and their creation and everything. We also see a lot more development with certain characters and certain relationships and certain bonds between some of the girls and so I really liked that. And then volume six, did I say what I rated these? I gave volume five a four and volume six four and a half star. I think I did. <laughs> but I gave volume six a four and a half which I think the rest of the volumes I gave all four stars but this one I gave a little bit higher of a rating just because I am a sucker for a conclusion. <laughs> I think conclusions can either kind of make or break a series for me whether that's a book series or a tv series or anything like that but I for some reason just get very emotional at the idea of things ending. I always cry at like season or series finales of shows, even if I'm disappointed. 
Game of Thrones. I still cry just because the idea of things kind of coming to an end and concluding makes me very emotional. And so I think that's why I like this one because it is the conclusion and we see where these girls kind of end up, how their relationships have grown since the beginning of the series and where they're at now and what they've learned and just their bond and just everything. I just loved where everything kind of ended up in this series and I loved how the ending was a bit open-ended. You're not quite sure where everything's gonna go but you kind of get this sense of hopefulness and I don't know I just really liked it I thought that this whole series was really fun very strange can understand why it's not for everyone and why not everyone enjoys it because it's very weird <laughs> but I really enjoyed the series and I'm glad I finally finished it because I started it in 2019 I think so it was time for me to finish and I did and I really enjoyed it so I read those two volumes for the 24-hour readathon as well as A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, and I gave this five stars. So in this book, we're following Pip, who has to choose something to do her, like, senior project on, and there was actually a kind of murder that happened in her town involving a few kids that were older than her, and she's never felt like the full story was ever really found out. She always thought that there was more to what actually happened, so that's what she decides to figure out for her project. So basically, this girl, like, a few years prior, who was really popular went missing and was assumed to be murdered by her boyfriend at the time. But then her boyfriend at the time actually committed suicide so they never really got to confirm that it was him. They just assumed it was him and then that was it. Case closed. They, you know, figured it out. But our main character Pip kind of realized that there might be more to the story and that is kind of where this starts. It starts with her kind of going back and interviewing kind of the people who were involved and were friends of these people and might know something about that night. She also gets help from the brother of the guy who was accused of murdering his girlfriend. So they're kind of trying to figure out what happened and it's just, this book was a whole lot. This was, <laughs> this was a wild ride. It was the perfect book to read for a 24-hour readathon because I couldn't put it down. I just wanted to know what was going to happen. I was a little skeptical going into it, not because I had heard bad things. I've actually only heard really good things about this book, but I was just a little skeptical because it was a young adult kind of mystery thriller novel, and even though I don't really read thrillers of any age category. I just know that YA thrillers don't necessarily have the best reputation, so I was just a little concerned this would be a bit predictable. It was not. That didn't need to be something I was concerned about because I had no idea where this was going the whole time. I feel like the ending just continued to snowball and just kept going and I just kept being surprised by everything that was revealed throughout the whole book but also the ending. I also really liked our main character Pip. I feel like the only other YA mystery kind of thing that I've read was Truly Devious and the main character in Truly Devious, Stevie, I don't like her. I found her very irritating. So it was nice to read about a main character who may have made some choices and done some things that they shouldn't have to get information, but they were self-aware, so that's more than what Stevie could offer me. <laughs> but yeah, I really liked this. I obviously can't really talk much about it because I don't want to spoil anything, but I really liked it. I really liked the characters. I feel like so many things came in and took me by surprise, and it was just so hard to put down. So if you are looking for a YA thriller, here you go. So those were the three books that I read for the 24-hour readathon that me, Casey, and Darian did again go and check out their vlogs because it was a fun time. So the next book that I read, I'm just going to quickly mention because I read it for a secret TBR video that who knows when it's going to be posted, but it's a thing. So I read Know My Name by Chanel Miller and that's, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to have to wait for the secret TBR. Hopefully it'll come out sometime in the next couple of months. That's the goal at least. So the next book that I read was Legendborn by Tracy Dion and I gave this four stars. So this is sort of a King Arthur retelling. We're following a main character, Brie, who has just recently lost her mom and really wants to kind of escape her like family home because it's just kind of too much. It reminds her too much of her mom and just she's really grieving. So she decides to go through this kind of college program for high schoolers and so she ends up going and staying at this college. I don't know why they didn't just have the characters be college age kids, but anyway. <laughs> so she's at this college for this program and she ends up discovering this secret society for the legend born. So they're basically just people who like within the King Arthur retelling all the different people, they're like descendants of all of those people. Can you tell I know nothing about King Arthur? <laughs> 
but she really technically is not supposed to be seeing what is going on with that society. So one night she does witness something and someone within that society kind of tries to wipe her memory, but it doesn't work. And she kind of connects that maybe these people were involved with her mom's death and maybe she didn't die in a car accident. Maybe she was murdered. So Brie gets kind of involved in the legend born society to try and get some information on what might have happened the night her mom died and she enlists the help of Nick who is a legend born and that's kind of where the story starts off. So I did overall enjoy this book. I don't clearly read many King Arthur retellings, don't know much about it, so that was a unique thing for me to read about, so that was fun. I also thought the discussion on grief was done really well. A lot of the moments with Brie and her like talking about her mom and thinking about her mom and going through all of that was very emotional, but I thought really well done. I also liked that there was that mystery with her mom kind of throughout the whole book, trying to figure out what really happened that night and if the legend born were involved. There also is a love triangle in this book, which I know some of you that immediately made you go, mm, okay, no thank you. But I actually do kind of like it. I like both of the guys that she's kind of interested in, potentially. I mean, I feel like it's very, like, typical YA. One's kind of more of a soft boy and one's more, like, mysterious. But I do like them. One of them, you know, was kind of threatening to, like, kill her at the beginning. So it's like, you know, just what I want a man. Someone who threatens my life. No. <laughs> but towards the end, I was like, okay. I see you. I understand. So I'm interested to see where that goes. I do like both of them. So I feel like I could be happy no matter what happens. But yeah, that was that was an added bonus because I feel like love triangles are most of the time a miss for me. Sometimes I like them, but most of the time I don't. So this was an instance of me not hating it. And I'm very interested to see where that goes. I think my biggest thing, which might not come as a surprise, but I really just did not understand necessarily the legend born and the rules and the roles that people had and like the levels to those things and how people were connected. I was very lost on me. I feel like there was a moment at the beginning where one of the characters who, oh, his name was William, one of my favorite characters from this whole book. But anyway, he was explaining to Brie kind of the roles within the legend born society and the different levels to that. And I feel like it was a bit info dumpy in the sense that it just was like a lot of information all at once so that I didn't take any of it in. And I just feel like the whole book, I didn't quite understand everything. That could just be me not being very smart. I don't know. But to me, I just never really fully understood the roles that people had and what people were necessarily to other people. Like, I just didn't quite get the roles within the legend born society, which made it a bit confusing. It also didn't help that there were a lot of characters in this book. And normally I love a big cast of characters, but there were so many characters. I did not understand who half the people were and that made it difficult for me again to understand who they were and what their roles were and what they were supposed to be doing because I didn't even know who they were. There was one point where there were three different guy characters like names right in a row and I was like I thought you were all the same person I <laughs> I don't know who any of you are so that kind of made it difficult and made me feel a little bit disconnected when certain things would happen with certain side characters but I still liked a lot of the characters that I did recognize and could remember like William so yeah it was just a bit confusing trying to grasp the world but is this Trace Dion's first novel is this her debut I'm not sure, but it's also the first book in the series and I'm sure a lot of this might get explored a bit more and maybe explained again in the second book. Like I feel like the sequel could have the potential to be a lot stronger and I really liked Living Born. So I'm excited for the sequel. I'm excited to see where it goes, but it was a really good fantasy. I feel like it's a very refreshing fantasy, if that makes sense, like a YA fantasy. Like there's a lot of YA fantasy out there and I feel like sometimes it's just like I feel like I'm reading the same things over and over again, but this one was pretty fun and pretty different. So I'd recommend if you are interested, it was a good time. So the next book that I read was The Swallows by Lisa Lutz and I gave this four stars. This was the April pick for the Winers Book Club, which I'll have their Twitter link below. It just got so dark in here. <laughs> Hello, son, can you come back? Thanks, bestie. So yes, this was the April pick for the Winers Book Club. So that is why I read it. I definitely wouldn't have read this without it being for that. So 
shout out to the whiners for making me branch out. So in this book we're following a lot of different characters perspectives but one of the characters is Miss Witt who is this new teacher at this New England school, this boarding school type of thing and she ends up telling her class to do this assignment and it's an anonymous assignment and they just kind of have to answer questions about themselves and after getting those assignments turned in she starts to have some concerning questions regarding what's going on in the school and what like some of the boys are doing and how it's affecting some of the girls in this school. So there's this thing called the dark room and a lot of things get posted there that are not necessarily appropriate. A lot of girls get exposed or sometimes inappropriate pictures get up on there and there's also another thing where they rate girls based off of their performance of certain activities. <laughs> And there are definitely girls in this school, including Gemma Russo, who is one of the character perspectives we get, who are trying to kind of fight against this dark room thing. They don't want it to happen anymore. They don't want it to exist. And Miss Wit is able to kind of figure out who some of the anonymous uh, replies to that assignment were, and she's able to figure out which girls kind of want to fight against it, and she kind of corrals this group of girls to kind of start fighting back. So there definitely were a lot of really great discussions in this book, you know, discussing consent and also making sure like you want to do something versus like feeling like you have to do something and you know how that's not okay, and a lot of really great discussions with that type of thing. I also found it really interesting and terrifying to kind of see the escalation of this kind of back and forth between the girls who are trying to fight against the people who run the dark room versus the people who run the dark room and kind of that back and forth and seeing like the stakes and what happens to people start to you know get significantly worse and worse and more intense. I found it interesting but also kind of terrifying and some of these character perspectives that we got some of these people were so annoying. There was a teacher, Mr. Ford, was that his name? Oh, I hated being in his perspective. He was the worst. <laughs> I think one of the things I didn't like love about this book is there were some things like some side stories and some character perspectives that didn't necessarily feel like they needed to be there. There were definitely characters that provided insight on certain situations but like the rest of the book I was like why are we following you? And also there were situations where I was like it definitely added a little bit of depth to the character and like why they have the certain motivations that they have but also some things just seemed so irrelevant. I definitely think that some of those things did add to the characters and why they acted certain ways or why they did certain things but it just also felt like by the end of it I was like why was that even a part of it? Also something that happened throughout the book that I found it was cool in the audiobook I will say. There were these like announcements over the intercom at the school and in the audiobook they made it sound like it was coming out of an intercom so that was neat but I was also like why are we getting these announcements unless I missed something and I'm just like misremembering it just didn't feel necessary but it added a cool element to the audiobook I would recommend the audiobook though there was a different narrator for every single character perspective that we got so that was really cool and made it really easy to follow along and to know whose perspective we were in I think if it was one narrator the whole time I would have been so confused so it was really cool that there was a different narrator for every character and like I said with the announcements over the intercom they made like the sound effects happen so that was really cool I definitely would recommend checking out the audiobook I also think there's mixed media inside of the book as well so maybe you want to do both maybe you listen to the audiobook and physically read along but the audiobook was an enjoyable experience so if you're interested in this book I would recommend the audiobook so yeah overall I did really like this book I thought the ending was wild and I also liked a lot of the discussions and things that came up in this book and I'm really excited to discuss it with the whiners whenever their live show may be I don't know if they have it figured out yet when I'm filming this but I'm excited to discuss it with them regardless. And then the last book I finished in April, I finished yesterday, the last day of the month, so I haven't had much time to sit with my thoughts but it was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I gave it a four star for now. So in this book we're following our main character Nora who finds herself in the Midnight Library in this moment between life and death and the books in the Midnight Library are basically Nora's life if she had made different decisions so there's you know infinite numbers of books in this library and it's all based off of if she had made a different decision at some point in her life so we're seeing throughout this book Nora kind of go through those decisions the things that she regrets that she did in her life and seeing where she would have been if she had changed what she did so when I first finished this book I well I cried multiple times <laughs> I cried at the end because I think the whole concept of 
having regrets, things that you wish you had done differently, and being able to look back on that and seeing where you would be, I think was quite an interesting concept, but also just the idea of having regrets is something that I think myself and a lot of people would be able to relate to. I feel like everyone has things that they regret or wish they had done differently. And just like all of the discussions surrounding the idea of having regrets and wishing you had done things differently just really resonated with me. You know, of course, there's things in my life that I wish I had done differently, or I look back and think, what would have happened if I had done this then, or had done this instead? You know, I think it did get a bit cheesy, but I think just the idea of like, you might have things that you regret and wish you had done differently, but every choice you've made kind of shaped you into who you are, and there's like a reason that is why you are at the point in your life that you are at. Like, there's a reason you made those choices and that things can always change in the future. You know, you have time to make changes in the future. You can make other decisions that impact your life in other ways in the future. And even though, yeah, like it did get a bit cheesy at the end, but I did really like the messages that surrounded that. Oh, I did forget to mention that this is for the 20 something book club. This was their April pick. So I'll have their Twitter as well as their live show for this linked below. But something that they brought up in the live show was kind of the mental health representation, the discussion on on depression and how it kind of felt like the overall message is like you can be happy if you're depressed you just have to like change your mindset and like you just have to think positive <laughs> i also don't want to be disrespectful towards the author because i know matt haig has dealt with depression in the past i don't know if he still does but i know that that is something that he has and I don't want to be like disrespectful or insensitive because this might very well be the experience that he had. I think just a lot of the stuff with mental health and how Nora was dealing with depression, it kind of felt like that was very surface level and by the end of the book the kind of message it was just like you don't need to be depressed just think happier and it's like that's not necessarily how it works for everyone. I'm obviously not trying to speak for people who deal with depression. I don't want to like speak over people's experiences because I'm sure some people it's like a situation thing and they just need to kind of work through that situation and get out of it. But some people it is more of a mental illness and it's not something that you can just flick a switch and make better. So I definitely think the messages surrounding mental health and Nora's depression by the end of it was not the most rewarding thing, but also again, not trying to invalidate anyone's experiences or Matt Haig's experiences or anything like that. But I do think like the discussion on having regrets in your life and kind of everything to do with that was really well done by the end. And I think the discussions revolving having regrets and realizing you can do anything from here on out was really impactful for me. It meant a lot to me. So that I think was done really well. And I also thought it was really interesting seeing Nora in her different lives. I thought that, that was really fun. And also this was just a very interesting concept. The whole time I was reading this, I thought it would make a cool movie. I know not every book has to be adapted, but the whole concept I just think would be really cool to see on screen. And I actually did look it up. I think it is being adapted. I think the rights have been sold. I don't know if anything's gonna come of it, but I think it is planning on being adapted, so that's kind of cool. So yeah, overall, I thought there were some pros, some cons, but overall, a lot of really great discussions and messages in this book. There were some, obviously, that didn't necessarily resonate with me or were a bit of a miss for me, but I still think that this book could mean a lot to a lot of people, depending on when you read it. It meant a lot to me. I feel like even though I didn't give it a full five stars, I feel like the things that really stuck with me are going to be things that I think about for a really long time. So yeah, I would definitely recommend checking out this book. I think it could mean a lot to a lot of people, but make sure you check the trigger warnings. There definitely are a lot of trigger warnings within this book, so make sure you are taking care of yourself and only reading this if you think you can kind of handle the subject matter, but if you can, I would highly recommend it. So that was actually the final book that I read in the month of April, so now I'm just going to quickly go over the things that I watched this month. So I don't think I watched any movies. So the first TV show that I watched was I watched Stranger Things season two and this was a rewatch for me. I have been making my way through my third rewatch of the show and I watched all of season two this month and I really like season two. I feel like season two is a lot of people's least favorite and I kind of understand why. It probably is mine too. Considering there was an episode that this time on my rewatch I actually skipped, 
I think that that, you know, gives the sign that it might be my least favorite just because that episode exists. <laughs> if you've seen the show, it's the episode that just follows Eleven a little bit later on in the season. And I don't even dislike the episode. I like a lot of the things that happen in that episode. I think it's important for um, that character's character growth. This time around, I just decided to skip it. I just wanted to get back to kind of all the other groups of characters. So don't know if that makes me a fake fan for skipping it. But you know, I've seen it before. I've seen it twice before, so I didn't need to rewatch it again. But I think for that reason, season two would probably be my least favorite. But I do love season two. I love Steve Harrington so much. His growth in season two is so good. And I just love his relationship that we see with Dustin and just him with the kids. It's just excellent. Whoever decided to put Steve with the kids I need to bow down to them. They deserve a raise. They deserve everything good in the world. They're just so big brained. It was such a good decision. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, watch season two of Stranger Things. I also watched season one of Shadow and Bone. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I did a whole vlog where I, basically half the vlog was me reacting and talking about Shadow and Bone. So if you want to go and hear all my thoughts, I'll have it linked above and below. I just wanted to say I watched it and I did really enjoy it. I think it was a really good adaptation. Of course, there were some things that were changed and added that were just like, why? <laughs> but I did overall really enjoy it. I think it was a very, very strong adaptation. I'm hoping we're getting a season two. I feel like people who aren't just fans of the books are watching it as well. So hopefully that's promising. Hopefully we get a season two because I deserve to see Nikolai on screen. I'm just saying. Anyways, moving on. And the last thing that I started watching in the month of April, I haven't actually finished, but I wanted to just like quickly mention it. And that is a K-drama called Romance is a Bonus Book. And it's just so cute. <laughs> it's definitely a lot more lighthearted than the other K-drama I've watched. I've only watched two. This is the second one I've watched. But the other one was It's Okay to Not Be Okay. And there was definitely a lot more of a serious tone with that one. A lot more stuff dealing with mental health and things like that. Whereas this one feels a lot more lighthearted. It's just, it's so cute. I have found myself laughing out loud and just smiling. And it's just, it's so good. And the guy, the main lead, there are no words. <laughs> it's also made me like sob and I really just don't know why because yes, there are like emotional and sad moments, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm full on sobbing. I'll be sitting there, tears rolling down my cheeks. My lip will be quivering and I'm like, girl, why? <laughs> but it's really good. It's really cute. And I'm hoping to finish it soon. I probably will finish it soon. And I'll be able to talk about it more when I finish it in May. But so far, I'm really loving it. So yeah, also, if you have any K-drama recommendations, please let me know. I have a lot that I want to watch, but I want to know like which ones are your favorites if you've watched any because I'll make that more of a priority. But yeah, that's everything I've read and watched in the month of April. Definitely let me know in the comments anything you read and watched in the month of April that you loved because I'm always looking for recommendations, but that is going to be it for my April wrap up. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.